So that same day that we were holding our uh, vote for Ron, who was appointed by the city council, uh, Tim, Ball, um, Tim Ball's seat opened up as well. And so that left us with three council members. So Tim Ball's seat, according to state code, will also have a 30-day window uh, that it has to be filled in. And in that 30-day, um, so 30-day window, that that has to be filled in and there is, um, currently you can submit an application if you would like to fill that spot. So we have um, four applicants so far who have filed to fill this spot left by Tim Ball. So that is Doug Courtney, John LaFrant, Elizabeth Rice, and Wesley Warren. So we have those four individuals. Now, aside from that, we also have a municipal election coming up. So there are three seats that are up for re-election this year. That is um, my seat, I'm Brittany, Kim's seat, Kim Rodella, and then Tim Ball's seat. So as you can see, if you're doing the math, um, we need to appoint somebody to fill Tim Ball's seat and that person will serve in that seat from October through our first meeting in January. Uh, at which point whoever wins that election will take that seat. So there are currently um, three candidates for those three seats. That is myself, Kim Rodella, Doug Courtney, and then there is also the opportunity to uh, be a write-in candidate. Today was the last day to file to be a write-in candidate for um, one of those positions, and we had uh, three applicants for those positions also for writing candidates. So that is John LaFrant, Elizabeth Rice, and Wesley Warren. So their names will not appear on the ballot, but you can vote for them, and you should ask them questions and get to know them, because they're all super great. Uh, Tim Ball is no longer eligible to run for this seat, which leaves us with our three open seats. So that was kind of just an update because it has been such a kind of a crazy 30 days to have these two vacancies and then be needing to fill one vacancy um, right before an election. So um, that is just the background. We wanted to give you some context for, for that. Um, the council has an item on its agenda tomorrow night considering moving this decision until January. And if you want to hear all the reasons behind that, you're welcome to tune in tomorrow night. That's not the purpose of this meeting tonight, though. This is purely information about the alcohol item. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to our excellent city administrator, Aaron Wells. And um, feel free to submit questions all along the way if you have them. Thank you, Brittany. I apologize about the slide issue. Our remote doesn't quite work from here clear up to the top. So Benson, will you go back a couple for me to the big QR code? Okay, so that, that QR code was at the back of the room when you came in, but in case you didn't, go ahead and feel free to um, log in now. It's open now, so feel free to submit your questions to uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bill's um, Point, feel free to submit your questions now. It's possible we'll answer them throughout the meeting. If we don't, um, we've got staff here monitoring those and we will answer those questions at the end of the meeting, the ones that we do miss along the way. Um, again, uh, as Council Member Bills uh, mentioned, uh, these, w this is us answering questions. This is not um, uh, the opportunity for you to give your feedback will be through the survey or through an upcoming City Council meeting, but we're not going to hold a feedback session here. This is purely informational. When you submit your questions, it's anonymous. We won't know who they come from. Um, so please, we, would, we want to get your questions answered. That's the purpose of tonight. What we are here to talk about tonight is a request that came through from an applicant who owns the property um, that they're trying to develop called Highland Mains. So in order to change city code, um, an individual has to apply, fill out an application, submit a fee, and then it's at that point the city council has to make a decision on what they have proposed. So uh, the owner of this property has submitted a proposal to change city code to allow alcohol sales um, for restaurants in the area that um, they are intending to develop. So to give you some reference in case you can't tell where this is, so CVS is in the bottom right corner. Um, the formerly Blue Lemon is up there along uh, 
uh, Alpine Highway. Um, so it's behind Quick, ha Quick Quack Car Wash and CVS um, is the location of this. Um, so this, this, a question we get a lot of the time is why is city council acting on this? Why isn't this coming onto a ballot? The answer is because that's the process that's outlined in code. It's very, there are very specific things that we can directly put on a ballot and this doesn't fall on that criteria. Ultimately what has to happen is city council has to act on the application and then should residents choose to do a referendum or an initiative on this, they have that right. But first it has to be decided at the city council level before it can go anywhere um, as far as a referendum were to go. High level summary of their request. Um, and as council member Bill said, the applicant will have some time just because they also do in any kind of a city council meeting. But staff wanted to give you a high level summary of the request. Um, what they would like, what they have requested is to do full service on premise um, restaurant licenses for alcoholic beverages. So what that means is any alcoholic beverage allowed under state code, beer, wine, mixed drinks, spirits, would be allowed to be sold. However, it would need to be consumed on site and it would need to be um, served with food. So it's pretty specific state law. Um, has a number of other regulations that would also apply to them, but there's certain classifications of licenses and that's the one that they are specifically requesting that council change um, our city code to be able to allow for moving forward. Um, and uh, the applicant will speak to this, but they're, they're asking for just their specific area. They're in what's called the commercial retail zone, which really just encompasses the area that they own. So they're really only asking for this one area However, as we'll talk about here in a minute, there are some discrepancies in our current city code related to alcohol sales. And so at this time, um, city council at this point is planning on making this decision applicable citywide. They'll first have to act on this application um, on this one area, but it's very likely that this is then going to carry through and um, impact the rest of Highland, not just this one area. Um, high level overview of some key, um, some key state law um, regulations that also apply to alcoholic um, beverage sales. So in it, um, th the state already regulates quite a bit of this, so if council did choose um, to allow this, state law would still apply uh, to those restaurants. Um, they have to have state licenses, individuals have to be 21 or older before they can consume alcohol. Um, the employees of those uh, restaurants have to go undergo special training. Um, the state limits what percentage of the drink you get contains alcohol. Uh, they also limit um, how many drinks any customer can receive. And also um, under this type of license, less than 20% of the revenue, their total revenue for their restaurant can come from alcohol sales. Anything more than that and then they would be in a different license category which is not the on-premise restaurant. Um, there's also state law also outlines that there's a minimum distance that these type of license, these type of I should say facilities who hold these licenses can be from certain kind of community gathering areas um, including schools, churches and things of that nature. So what is our current city law? Um, Highland City Municipal Code says that, quote, the city does prohibit the retail sale of beer for both on and off premise consumption. So these, or these city codes, these city laws were passed in 1977 and then reiterated in 2000. So the city was founded in 1977. So this has been something that has been on Highland City residents' minds since the very beginning. Um, when those codes were passed, uh, the state already regulates alcoholic sales and it has, um, at that time that those were passed, it was more heavily regulated to the point by passing just saying no beer citywide, we were essentially saying no alcohol sales citywide because that's, because statewide, state code took care of everything else at that time. Since that time, state code has changed, city code really has not. Um, it hasn't kept up on it except for in certain commercial zones we have outright banned alcohol sales, including the commercial retail zone, actually go back one, 
commercial retail zone that, we show, that I showed you earlier where Highland Mains is, right? That big dirt field does say um, retail sales of alcoholic beverages are prohibited. So that specific commercial, so we have the beer code that encompasses citywide, but that specific commercial code also just says no alcohol whatsoever right now. And so those are the laws that the applicant is looking, is asking city council to consider changing. Right now we don't have any commercial establishments that are selling alcohol in Highland. Partially because of these rules, partially because of business choices, but we don't have anything right now. However, as I talked about earlier, there are some gaps in the code. This area where surrounding Macy's, this is what we call our commercial one zone. Commercial one does not do a prohibition on alcohol in that particular commercial area. Which means technically a restaurant could open there. They couldn't sell beer because that applies citywide right now, but they could, if they were properly licensed by the state, they could sell other alcoholic beverages such as wine or mixed drinks. Um, so th this is one of the reasons why city council has said that they are intending to act on this application, right, this one change, but then look citywide and see what we want to do because there are some gaps in our code right now. It's very light, uh, well, we don't know why it wasn't included at the time when the commercial one zone was put in place. It's likely that they were defaulting back to those 1977 and 2000 ordinances that said that basically said no alcohol citywide because of the state law, and so they didn't have concern. Also, as um, city council used to be the one to process business licenses and allow them to come into the city. And when you look at, back on historical minutes, when an application came into this area, um, his, city councils historically did say no alcohol sales on those individual licenses. So it certainly had been a consideration on their minds um, at the time. But because now um, business licenses are handled at the staff level, city council um, does not get involved. Technically that gap does exist at this point where um, they could come in and sell uh, not beer but other alcoholic beverages. The other slight discrepancy or question that we get on occasion has to do with the country club. So Alpine Country Club existed before the city. Um, it was in use in operation before Highland City was founded in 1977. Uh, and so it does, the Alpine Country Club does have a full service alcohol license. Um, they do sell alcohol, but they existed before the city and they're what's called a private club. So their use is grandfathered in um, and whatever changes city council makes, so long as Alpine Country Club continues to operate legally under the state premise, they will continue to operate status quo. It won't impact them moving forward because they have been grandfathered in, ultimately. That's kind of the high level that the city is going to present, so I'm actually going to turn the time over to Joe Hamm and Darren Young, who are the applicants um, and the owners of Hi the Highland Mains project. Once they're finished, then I'll come back and kind of give a wrap up of the next steps that city council is going to take before we take your questions. Good evening. Thank you for taking your time and coming out. I'm sorry if you have to hear this again because this will be similar to the presentation um, we provided a couple weeks ago in, uh, or a couple months ago now in the city council meeting. So my name is Darren Young and just by way of background introduction, um, I, I live in uh, California. I'm from San Diego right now. I did, I've got roots here. I started my family, bought our first home um, in Ivory Ridge down the street. So my wife and I graduated from BYU bought a home there and we started our, our life and kind of career here. So I remember this project from our years there and just, you know, regularly going to Blue Lemon and wondering like, what, this is, this is an interesting project, what an interesting piece of property and it needs to be something really cool. It needs to be something deserving of the community that surrounds it. And so uh, fast forward, I, I went to USC and, and got a master's there and then now I've been with this company um, as the CEO for the last 10 years. And so when the opportunity a couple of years ago came to acquire this property, it was something I, we, I, I jumped at and I was really excited about. And so when that, same kind, or when that time came a couple years ago, I partnered with a good family friend of ours, Joe Ham, who's been in, in real estate development a couple decades longer than me, um, also a BYU grad, and we, and we partnered up and went through a lot of plans and a lot of iterating to, to come up with what we ultimately ended up. So this, this is your current zoning code. Um, and I just want to put in perspective 
the, the commercial and residential zones which you have. And so we are the, the top red square and the totality of Highlands commercially, commercial zones are, are basically that, that red and orange right there. Um, you do have a couple in, in your new plan development down by the high school, a couple little retailers. But when it, when it comes to creating something unique, a, a unique and creative, um, compelling gathering, community gathering place, and, and what also this law and these changes are going to apply to, it, it is really, that's, that's the extent of it, what you see in, in red and orange there, and, and the limited restaurants that will be able to operate there. Joe, do you have anything? Well, I would just say that uh, I am long in the tooth, have been developing for almost 40 years. It was very unusual to come into Highland and see such a limited amount of commercial space that can be developed. Um, typically, in a real pro-growth area, you'll see shopping centers developed one after another, and they each try to leapfrog the next one because staying out by the newest homes is the greatest advantage you would have. But here, this is all that Highland, unless changes are made, which I don't see how or when that would happen, it doesn't seem likely, but this will be your commercial center of the community, and I don't know that you'll have much additions to that, which made this very appealing to us because we felt that we had a protected area here to develop on. So as we, as we started iterating, I mean, we, we started off and probably went through a half a dozen different design concepts, and those started off being more fast, casual, um, drive-through centric site plans. As we talk to more family and friends that li live in this community, I've got a lot of family and friends, but Joe does too, um, that will patron this, we realized, okay, you know, that, that may work, it may satisfy a need, but it won't, you know, it, it won't be something that we, we can really be proud of, in my, in my opinion, in the long run. We, we're not a developer um, that just, is, we're not building this to sell it. We're building this to own it for the long haul. We also own this, the shops around the outside, um, with the exception of a couple of the pads that were sold previous. But we want something that we can be proud of. I, I come, I've got family that live here and usually do Fourth of July here. I want something that we can take our kids and our family to, you know, for years to come. And so we ultimately end up with the next slide, um, a very pedestrian-centric community gathering place. As, as we went through iterations of this, the more people I talked to were like, more grass, more grass, more, more lawn, more sod, more areas. We even talked about, um, talked to parents of like, okay, where are we gonna put the restrooms? And so can the parents sit on the outside where restaurants are, watch their kids in the play area, and can they also see the doors to the restrooms when kids have to go there? So there was a lot of kind of thoughtful planning into this, but a little bit of a crash course in, in kind of real estate. When, you, when you're developing something like this, usually you need what, what's called an anchor. Your anchor tenant, your anchor draw that keeps people coming back over and over again. Um, to, a, to, a, to a shopping center. Oftentimes, that is a grocery store. You know, that, that is the anchor. Uh, fast food drive-throughs, they kind of serve as anchors. They keep people going. What we ended up with something with this is we don't have those traditional anchors. And the anchors for something like this, they do need to be restaurants. They need, they need to be restaurants that people love, that people are excited to go to over and over again. And so as we rolled out these renderings, of, of what we wanted to create, the, the interest from restaurants, these anchor restaurants became, became robust. Again, a little bit more detail. We knew we wanted to be family and, and kind of kid-centric in this play area, but I didn't want a bunch of colorful plastic things, so we, we focused on stone and wood and logs in this community gathering area. A couple renderings to give you an idea of, of what that space will look like. We picture a lot of lawn chairs, we picture, um, yeah, bocce ball and cornhole and other things and fire pits. So, you know, this is, this is the vision. Th these are renderings of the, of the plans that we have. We've drawn, they're approved, they're out for bid. Um, you know, we are, we are ready to move forward with this. Pending this list of tenants. So this is an idea of the type of tenants that have come to us as we've, as we've begun to, you know, market this over the last six months. You may recognize most of these you know, it's not necessarily these concepts that would come. They, they may, but it may also be the chefs that you would, would recognize. So Urban Hill and Hearth and Hill are out of Park City. Um, Wood Ash Rye is out of St. George. Communal, Black Sheep, um, Pizzeria 712 are concepts out of a, another restaurant or another chef. And then there's a handful of other concepts from different places. And all of these concepts said, yes, we love it. We want to come serve this community. We need to be able to 
to sell our normal wine and uh, food and beverage menu. We need to be able to compete with all of the other restaurants that are you know, throughout northern Utah County and South Salt Lake County. So again, these are all tenants that are kind of waiting and had conversations that have shown interest. And based on these anchors, if you go to the next slide, we've got the whole, a, a wide range of other types of tenants, other fast casual, some sit down um, restaurants, you know, other lifestyle, health and wellness, kids, boutiques, women's clothing, a little bit of everything. So we really, we have the makeup of something really, really neat. But what all these tenants are waiting for is these anchor restaurants. And what these anchor restaurants are waiting for is, you know, whether or not they can, they can open here and feel like they can compete. And that is dependent on, you know, the outcome here. For as many years as I have been developing and long beyond that, uh, shopping centers focused strictly on driving traffic. They needed an anchor tenant, as Darren said. I happened to work for a grocery store for many years, and I happened to know that we would drive sometimes 6,000 cars a week into a grocery store. When we bought all of the perimeter buildings, with a couple of exceptions, we drew up to 50 different site plans, trying to determine how we could use that nine acres behind. And it became apparent to us, and this is not just applicable to this piece of property, but it's happening all across the United States now. The boxes are not expanding right now, and maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, depending on your preference, but it quickly became apparent that we weren't going to attract a box on this location. Years before we ever owned this property, there were site plans that were approved by the city and included in a development agreement that showed a large box development here. That wasn't going to work. Times have changed. When I entered the business, we would lease 70% of the space that we would build. We would lease to the likes of uh, Close Time. And uh, I can't even think of the video retailer. Who was that? Blockbuster Video. Those kind of retailers are now gone. And we used to rent 70% of our space to those kind of retailers that were not food oriented. But America has changed and now Dining is much more popular than retail spaces. And so now that ratio has flipped. 70% of our tenants in all of the shopping centers that I have built are now food-oriented tenants, and 30% are retailers. And so with all of those factors in mind, a very low appeal to a box retailer here, we thought, how can we take a nine acre piece of property that has a lot of depth and attract traffic into this area to these retail stores? And so we came up with this concept of four large buildings surrounding this courtyard area. And we studied courtyards in other shopping centers all across the United States and found there was great appeal for community gathering and nighttime dining and daytime lunches. And so that's why this became a focus to us because that's what America is demanding to, as well. So we created large spaces in each one of the buildings and then smaller ones to surround those anchor restaurants that we developed. So I think it's important to know, and I think Aaron did a good job. Our intent wasn't to bring this issue you know, to, to as global, you know, as it ends up being, although, you know, we don't have any objection to it. But like Aaron said, our, our request is slowly, is, is, you know, a couple things. We want to remove the restriction on the CR zone that doesn't exist at the C1 zone across the street and remove a restriction on the sale of beer for consumption only at a restaurant with, the, with food, right? You have to have the intent to sit down and eat. And, and like Aaron said, there are a lot of, of Utah-specific laws for example, if someone's sitting down at a table, they can't even stand up holding their alcoholic beverage and move to another table. The server has to do that. And so all of that, you know, whoever is going to be consuming that, you know, that stays within the premises of the restaurant. There's no possibility where those beverages end up outside the walls of the restaurant. Um, and again, we, we support and the continued restriction on bars and taverns, which are a completely different type of operation and not what we're focusing on here. 
and what our application does not, and I'm just highlighting this because we've had a lot of questions on it, it doesn't touch the city's Sunday law, you know, so that still, that still will exist. It doesn't address any retailer, uh, the ability of retailer to sell alcohol for off-premise consumption. We're not, we're not trying to change that at all. You've got, you've got Smith's on one side of the city, you've got Walmart on the other side of the city. You know, those, those exist, those, those don't change, and um, what you have in the city. Um, and it, what we're asking for doesn't enact the blanket approval um, of alcohol sales at all restaurants across the city, although, like Aaron said, the city intends to make this uniform, uh, which seems to make sense given some of the confusing nature of things. When we went to the market through a very uh, top-notch broker that we use in a lot of our projects, it was never our intention to say, seek out restaurants that sell alcohol. I don't drink alcohol, Darren doesn't drink alcohol. But the expanding restaurants in today's market say, I'm going to make a $2 million investment in, at, as a minimum in each restaurant location. I'm not willing to take the risk of making that kind of an investment if you can't allow me, Mr. Developer, to have my full array of menu that I do in all of my other locations. And I think that many of us go to restaurants we don't notice, perhaps, that they serve alcohol because we may not order that, but most restaurants, I can't think of a single restaurant right now that is expanding that doesn't have that on their menu. Had a restaurant that was expanding and that would have an interest in this location come to us, we will sign anybody that doesn't sell alcohol, believe me. We would love that, but that's not who comes to us and says, I will come if you will get me this right. So yeah, I mean, to that, to that point, I expect many of those restaurants that you saw, many of the restaurants that you likely go to, to you know, enjoy a family gathering or travel to somewhere in Salt Lake or Park City, probably, I would think, you know, sell alcohol as a part of their offering, even if you're not partaking of it. Um, so this is, you know, this is our request. This was actually a fully approved plan. This was our first iteration. We almost actually started construction on this last year. Um, and you can see, you know, th this was almost fully leased before we started construction. We've got four drive throughs and then I've highlighted in green the extent of the, the, the patio space. I, I look at it now and it reminds me of what we see just on the other side of I-15 at the Timpanogos exit, right? It's just a bunch of drive throughs it's your fast casual. And, and that, that is likely what the project would have to revert to if we can't get the flexibility to have these anchor restaurants. Um, to sell alcohol, and again, not this. This is this is not necessarily bad. There's there's demand for this. It's successful. I'm sure it will serve a need, and so something will be developed here. I desperately want it to be something really neat, something that the community can enjoy and you know participate in, and be a gathering place for for years to come. You know, this this will provide some needs. I don't think it provides that to the extent. You know, these were the original renderings of that of that initial plan. Again, I don't know if we'd have to revert to exactly this initial, um, initial plan, but our hope is not to do that. <laughs> it, it's to do this, and I, and I don't mean that in any sort of threatening way. Um, it's, it's just where we are with, with the project. We would love to do this. We think this is what the community needs and deserves, and, we, and we, you know, I've talked to so many people and says, to the extent you have first-tier quality restaurants that want to come in here, the type that you would go to, that don't need to sell alcohol, don't want to sell it as a part, we'd love to talk with them. But over six to 12 months of marketing, we haven't had any of those to date. And so you know, that, that's the foundation and that's what we hope. As you consider this, you can consider it in the totality of what hinges on it. Um, you know, this, this relatively limited commercial zone and the last opportunity to create some neat retail gathering, you know, lifestyle center in Highland and get some neat restaurants. And you know, it, it'll be one or the other. Yeah, I want to clarify. I didn't mean to imply that there aren't restaurants that are expanding that don't sell alcohol. There are many, but they're, not, they're mostly quick serve restaurants for a full service dining experience with tablecloth, weighted tables. We have not had any come to us willing to say I'll come and not sell alcohol. Anything else? No, just, just thank you. Thank and, you very much. Yeah, regardless of your position. We appreciate you getting involved. Um, we agree with the city. It's important that everyone is, is aware and informed on this. And 
you know, if the majority of, of Highland would prefer one of these to the other, you know, that's, that's what we want to execute. We just want to make sure everyone's got the full context. And, um, you know, I know there will be Q and A's and I will be sticking around, Joe and I after, to the extent anyone wants to, you know, talk with us and, and ask things further, but thank you. Okay, so what happens now? Um, now that you've kind of heard the information, um, ultimately, as I said before, this is at least initially a city council decision. Um, the options the city council has at this point are to deny the change, um, and assuming they want to make that city wide, they would clarify that uh, alcohol sales um, do not happen in Highland. Uh, the second option the city, ha the city council has is to approve the change and allow the alcohol sales as, um, as has been requested um, within that, those very specific, uh, specific areas sp under that specific code that we've talked about. The last is to approve the change but maybe add some additional regulations on top of it that the city council has talked about um, but of course hasn't made a final decision. So I'm going to talk about each of those a little bit more in depth. So if the city council chose to deny this request, um, the city law would be updated so that no, so it would be very clear that no alcohol sales would be allowed um, for retail sale in the city of Highland. That means no restaurants, no grocery stores, no convenience stores um, could sell any type of alcohol. In addition, liquor stores and bars would still be prohibited um, uh, throughout the city. If the city council chose to approve the request, as has been outlined for you um, by the applicant, uh, alcoholic beverages would be allowed in restaurants in commercial zones citywide. So we have the commercial um, retail zone uh, where Highland Mains will go. We also have the commercial uh, one commercial one zone, excuse me, near Macy's. Um, we also have some specific, they're called planned developments, like specific areas throughout the city like the, um, uh, we referenced Oh, Bo the Boyer Project by Lone Peak High School. Um, that uh, also potentially has some implications um, related to this depending on how council acts. Uh, however, okay, so we're talking restaurants only. Grocery stores and convenience stores um, such as uh, Country Corner, right, would still be prohibited from selling alcohol because that's an off-premise consumption where you take the alcohol with you to go consume elsewhere. So that would still be prohibited because this is isolated to just on-premise restaurant. Um, restaurant. Uh, liquor stores and bars would still remain prohibited. Um, and as the applicant pointed out, this has nothing to do with the Sunday um, business closure law. So that will not be touched as a part of this process. Um, additional regulations that the city council has talked about um, potentially doing, if they choose to allow this, maybe there's some additional regulations we, um, that they throw on this, uh, are things that they've discussed in concept but haven't solidified. Things they're considering are limiting the total number of restaurants that can sell alcohol. So even if we did it citywide, maybe there's a specific number that we say Highland City only allows this many business, res business license is that sell alcohol. Another concept that the council has discussed is setting a minimum distance between restaurants so they have to be so many feet apart from each other, um, similar to some state codes that regulate that type of thing. Uh, another thing is uh, the, to set a limit on the maximum number available per commercial area, right? So maybe the CR zone has a certain number and the C1 zone has a certain number. And then finally, um, one additional consideration that has been discussed is so um, while the applicant has requested something called the full service restaurant license, right, which allows beer, wine, um, mixed drinks, uh, any type of alcohol allowed by state law, there is a license that allows less alcoholic drinks um, uh, called a limited service uh, license, which would limit it to you could only do beer and wine um, rather than a full service. What's going to happen next? So tomorrow night, um, as council member and mayor pro tem bills um, mentioned, tomorrow night city council is going to decide when they're even going to make this decision. Um, because of the changes we've had in our city council members in the past couple of months, uh, city council kind of wa wants to discuss, do we make this decision now or do we wait until after the election um, in November? 
So, uh, so right now the most likely scenarios are either it's going to happen on November 7th or it's going to happen out in January. And tomorrow night they'll make that decision. And when they make that decision, we'll communicate this out citywide. So hopefully you're all here because you got a postcard that said a survey is going to be following and that survey is not coming right now because we don't know when the decision is going to be made. And we didn't want to send out a survey if the decision was going to be made for a few months. We wanted to make sure that it was um, near the time that the decision was made. So when the survey does come, um, we are, we have, while this is not a vote, um, while the survey is not a vote, it's council really does want your feedback. They've expressed that and they want it to be, um, they want the feedback to, uh, uh, they want to make sure that they're hearing from residents and that they can trust the information that they're getting back. So we've designed it to be, um, to try to really get that information back and to try um, to make sure that it's fair and that nobody is um, inputting more than they can or anything of that nature. So we have unique identification codes on our survey. Every home is going to get two mailed to you. If you need more than that, contact us because you have more than, more than two adults living in your home. Contact us, we'll get you more. Um, we are going to ask you to do it online just so that we can turn around our results quickly. If you have, ever, if hopefully you've taken our annual survey, um, but doing those by hand takes a long time. And depending on the timeline, we want to be able to get this information back quickly, which means online is a lot easier for us. Um, ultimately, uh, council absolutely cares about this, but it is an informal decision, informal feedback where council will ultimately be the deciding vote on this. And um, we'll talk about that timeline. Uh, will you go forward for me? So here's a preview of what it's going to look like. So we tried to keep it super simple. All you have to answer is three questions. Should this change happen? Yes or no? If you do want it to happen, do you want it to be limited service, so just beer and wine? Or do you want it to be full service as the applicant has requested? And then if you want to give us any comments, you can do so. So we want to keep it super simple so that it's easy for you to fill out and get back to us. So uh, hopefully you've gotten the QR code already. Um, if not, it's up here for you. Um, staff's been monitoring your questions as they come in, and so I'm going to have them read me questions, and then either myself or whomever it makes sense to will answer those questions for you. In addition, if you don't have the ability um, to do the QR code but have a question, please, there's paper and pencils in the back. Um, please bring them out to the staff table, and we'll make sure to get them filtered um, through. So... Uh, Brooklyn and Jay. All right, thank you. I will be reading the questions as they come in so that I'm not doing any editing for clarity. Um, why are the alcohol laws not uniform in the city? Because I wasn't here when all of those were written, I can't give you a great answer on that. Um, I can tell you, in reading minutes and trying to piece together what we think happened, um, we think that the 1977 and the 2000 ordinance that said no beer citywide that essentially prohibited alcohol at that time, we think the council just at the time when other commercial zones were coming in just said, oh, we're covered, we don't have to think about that. Um, that is the best, that's the assumption that we're getting. Uh, we could be wrong, um, uh, but that's, that's what we think. And honestly, just while I wish city code is perfect, the reality it's not. And you can find gaps, unfortunately, in a lot of parts of city code. And that's just one of those existing ones that have been highlighted as a part of this process that we want to fix moving forward. How can Higland grant liquor licenses be allowed in one place and not another? <laughs> it says Higland. So how can we do it in one place and not the other? Um, uh, so we, right now, because we could right now technically because that's what our commercial zones say. They say that area around Macy's, you can have alcohol as long as it's not beer. Um, but Highland Mains area, the CR zone, you can't have anything. So we, the a city code could be, could, uh, could be updated but left like that. Council could make the decision, hey, I only want to allow alcohol sales in the commercial retail zone, that Highland Mains area, but nowhere else in the city. Um, uh, the state grants cities a lot of 
rights in terms of land use, and, and that is one of those things that council could do if they wanted to do. If changes are made in our Highland City Code for this development, would this transfer to other businesses as they apply for liquor licenses? Ultimately, it would depend on how, um, how the city council decides to act moving forward. First, they've got to act on this one application. They've got to tell Highland Mains, yes or no, we want to allow alcoholic beverages to be sold in the restaurants in your area. After that, um, it's up to council what they want to do. They have indicated previously that they want to fix city code, they want to fix the code citywide so that it does apply to everybody or nobody essentially, right? Where everybody gets to do it within the state parameters or nobody gets to do it. Um, they don't have to do that, but that's the direction that they have given to this point. How does our local police department feel about this law change? I'm going to give a general staff answer, and then I will let the police. Uh, we do have some staff members, including our um, police chief and fire chief, here to answer questions. Um, staff's job is to carry out the laws that the city council puts forward, uh, which means we are neutral, which means that um, what city council tells us to do, we will do, um, and we'll carry out those um, laws. And so we, we try not to have an opinion about issues because that's not our job. Our job is administration versus uh, legislation. But Chief William, what do you want to add to that? So thank you. It's good to be with you this evening. I appreciate the opportunity to address this because I've been asked several times how this would affect and how we feel about uh, the sale of alcohol in our cities. Uh, currently, as has been stated previously, alcohol is allowed to be sold at the country club. They were grandfathered in uh, when they established the, the country club way back in the 70s, I believe, is when it happened. Uh, we did, we ran our statistics for the last 10 years. And as the police department, uh, and we, as we respond to those calls at the country club, we have not had an alcohol-related call from the country club in the last 10 years. Um, and our calls related to the country club have merely to do with uh, traffic uh, complaints as well as uh, dog complaints and we have a lot of alarms that occur at the country club. It's been my, uh, I've been doing this for 28 years and it's been my experience that these type of establishments we don't uh, see individuals leave those establishments and, and leave them impaired because of alcohol. Uh, people merely have a, a drink with their dinner and that's about the extent of it and it's been my experience that we just do not have that as uh, as patrons frequent these types of businesses. I think what you're saying is, I mean, at restaurants versus a bar or a tavern Correct. type Correct. of... Correct, yeah. We're, we're talking about a sit-down restaurant where people might have some wine or a, or a spirit with their drink, and uh, it's different than a tavern or a bar where people go uh, to uh, drink their, uh, their lives away or whatever they're deciding to do. So just a different... Just to, you know, people make different choices. It's not been my experience that we, we see this in, in these types of establishments. You know, and please don't take that as the police department is saying, you know, we want to approve this change. It's the police department has not seen concerns in the past um, with this type of a, um, a situation, right? That's correct, yep. This type of a license. So, but ultimately it's city council who gets to make that decision. Uh, will the public see the results of the poll? Yes, we will absolutely. So when this decision ultimately comes back to city council, part of the information that staff shares with them at that time will be whatever the results of the survey are as to what the community gives, this, gives the feedback for. Who makes the ultimate decision on this? First, city council. So city council will vote one way or the other on the Highland Mains project. Um, there is, uh, you know, we live in a wonderful area, a wonderful country where you have the ability to refer a council decision if you disagree with that, that could potentially make it onto the ballot if you get through the referendum process, but ultimately it's city council first, um, unless a referendum or something of that nature is filed. Um, let's see here. What is required to change this city ordinance? the council to approve it. I'm um, sorry, so to change this city ordinance, the, ap the applicant has um, submitted 
their, what they want to see changed. And so city council would have to vote to approve that change. They could, like we talked about, kind of make some tweaks to it and say, I don't want to do full service, but I'm okay with limited service. But it's ultimately a city council vote that will decide what happens next. Uh, why doesn't the developer try and recruit restaurants that don't serve alcohol to be in the new development? Um, I'll, you know, I'll repeat what I heard them say and please uh, add anything um, to what, what the developer is telling us is to build the concept um, with the anchors and the outdoor seating in the plaza area. They need anchor restaurants to do that. They have tried to talk with a variety of restaurants and all of them that they have talked to are telling them, I need to, I want to be able to have the same kind of menu that I have in any other restaurant, which includes alcoholic beverages. Um, if you look at their quick service plan, the original plan that was approved, um, those restaurants didn't need alcohol because they were quick service. Um, so I don't think the developer, as, as they said, they're not opposed to having an anchor restaurant that doesn't want to sell alcohol. They just have not yet encountered one. Joe, please. Or Darren. So the four bit, I'll repeat if, uh, what I can just for their recording um, and the video in case they weren't heard. Um, uh, the, the anchor restaurants um, have asked for that. But there are other restaurants that would come if the anchor restaurants come that don't sell alcohol necessarily. They're smaller ones, right? They're not the full service, uh, what did you say, tablecloth weighted, weighted, weighted restaurants. Um, but they're smaller ones that would come um, in addition to those anchor restaurants, if the anchor restaurants come. Again, I'm answering for the developer. All right, what is the required distance from a church? Um, I'm wondering if you're asking, okay, I don't know the feet off of the top of my head, but I'm wondering if you're asking, so if you look back at the map, um, there is a church to the north of this property. Um, the, the site plan, um, that Highland Mains has, has office space on that north half, and the restaurants are towards the south half. So while, while staff, we aren't reviewing, does their, does their application meet state code? It does seem like it does because the distance is far enough away from the restaurants. Now, because the restaurants are on the south end of their property. Ultimately, that's up to them to make sure that they meet state code, um, but it seems like they do from staff's uh, review. Um, do grocery stores or gas stations sell alcohol now? I no. I their meaning in Highland. Because grocery stores and gas stations are limited in Utah to only be able to sell beer. Um, and because we have the citywide blanket ban on beer, no, you know, our, gro our grocery stores, our gas stations do not currently sell beer in Highland because we've expressly prohibited beer. Will establishments be monitored closely for adherence to state liquor laws? Highland City will not be in charge of making sure that state laws are followed in these restaurants. That's ultimately, what's the State Department? DABS. Apparently they've changed their name. Department, what does that stand for? Alcoholic Beverages Services will be in charge of making sure that they follow all of the state codes. That's not something Highland City regulates, so we will not be monitoring that. Our city attorney is here, um, so uh, he agrees with you. Thank you for looking that up. So you have to be 200 feet away from a church in order to sell alcohol. Are there patio eating areas where alcohol will be served? Would that be in the play area? Um, I hope so. Uh, Highland Mains, why don't you come answer that question? Where you intend your restaurants to serve the alcohol? So 
I mean, we intentionally think and then put the anchor restaurant over here. And, and, and it, so yes, there will be outdoor patio spaces. It's very important though under state law that those places be restricted. So it's not like you simply can, you know, have a bunch of tables that kind of spew out into this area and people can sit there. There has to be the equivalent of a fence, a wall, you know, some sort of partition that keeps any movement of, of any food or beverage outside, you know, of a patio. The you know, other thought is, you know, you put some of those, you know, even farther back. So, but yes, the idea was those restaurants are going to be in the far corners and not right here. Will changing the alcohol law apply to groceries as well, grocery stores as well? So I think I answered that, but no, because grocery stores by state law are only restricted to beer and off-premise consumption, right? You buy it there and you take it home. Um, council at this time has told us the only thing they're interested in maybe doing or maybe having a conversation about is on-premise um, consumption, so at restaurants, not grocery stores, not gas stations. How does this proposed change compare with Alpine and Cedar Hills? I can't speak to Cedar Hills. Alpine City um, has a similar law on the books to as us, as our beer law, where it says beer is banned citywide, um, but they're specific to beer because back when we adopted those laws, by just saying beer, we were basically talking about all alcohol. Um, in talking with their city staff, they have the intention of bringing that forward to correct that change, but um, because of Al Alpine's location, they don't have a lot of commercial, and so this hasn't been an issue that's come up. Currently, they don't have any um, commercial businesses that sell alcohol in their city. I do not know what Cedar Hills' law is. I have not heard that they prohibit alcohol at all, but um, I, I, don't, I don't know well enough to say that that is true. Uh, we'll have staff kind of see if they can figure that out in the meantime. Has this development already been approved by City Council? The development's been approved in a few different forms. So the um, version that you saw that had the four drive-throughs was approved. Um, the site plan was approved. They were about to start construction, had in some cases kind of started some movement at least, um, headed that way. They stopped, asked for a pause, brought back the new site plan that you've seen with you know, the outdoor seating and the anchor restaurants, and that was approved by city council. So currently what has been approved um, by city council is the site plan that, um, with the anchor restaurants, um, with the outdoor dining area, and the, um, everything of that nature. So they are, they are able to build that as soon as they um, want to build that and receive the right permits, I should say, in terms of building and things of that nature, but it's been approved at the city council level. Um, according to an individual, Cedar Hills allows alcohol. Any other? So we're going to, just because we've got this recorded and I've got it streamed, um, we're going to please try to filter your questions that way so that everybody who watches this later, because we're trying to promote it later, um, will, will be able to hear everything that you say. And then I will say to you, if you have a specific question or want to talk more in detail, city council, um, the city council members who are here, uh, um, Highland Mains developers, city staff will be sticking around to have more conversations if it makes more sense to have them offline. Uh, and in addition, of course, you're always welcome to make your feedback known to City Council through the survey, by emailing them at the next public meeting when we do do more of a public hearing um, process. Okay, I think um, according to staff, we've answered um, most of the questions. Uh, thank you very much for coming. We do hope that this was helpful. Um, uh, thank you for coming. So we'll keep in touch with you and let you know as things progress.